Professor James Nikopoulos. I teach a variety of different courses here at NU. And next semester, I'll be teaching a couple of courses I'm really excited about. One is uh, called The History of the Novel, in which we will be reading six novels, everything from uh, Don Quixote and Robinson Crusoe all the way up to Madame Bovary and um, uh, Mrs. Dalloway and Season of Migration to the North. Um, and we will be talking about how the novel as a genre has adapted and changed over the years, how it went from being the thing you didn't let your innocent, corruptible daughters and sisters read because it would turn them into um, corrupt and no longer innocent women, um, to being a very respectable academic genre that you can teach courses about. Um, and along the way, we'll be discussing the ways uh, the um, a novel taps into uh, sociology and psychology and history and how you get a little bit of all of these by reading a great novel. And then my other course is one that I've always wanted to teach and no one at NU has ever wanted to take. I think they're too scared of the language, but they shouldn't be because he's amazing. And of course, I'm talking about Shakespeare. I'll be reading six of Shakespeare's plays. Um, we'll be reading Hamlet, King Lear, The Tempest, um, and we will be talking about just all the ways we, you can understand Shakespeare, which are infinite. He truly is one of the great minds of all time, and if you're intimidated by Shakespeare, but have always been curious about reading him, um, this would be a great course for you. It is meant for people who are being introduced to the Bard. Um, for whom the language is challenging. It's challenging even for English speakers, um, but in the end, it becomes extremely re rewarding. So, if you're interested in these courses, I look forward to seeing you next semester. Um, take care. All the best. Hello from NU. My name is Amanda Murphy. I have a PhD in Russian literature from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I wrote my doctoral dissertation on Pushkin's borrowings from English literature, specifically focusing on his female characters. I teach several courses towards the major in world languages, literatures, and cultures. I also serve as the director of the summer school in Russian and Eurasian studies. This fall, I'll be teaching WLL 209, Introduction to Translation Studies, which will cover theoretical and practical issues in translation, including a historical overview of translation, an introduction to major theoretical debates in translation studies, and also a variety of translation projects, such as translating the news, translating advertisements, translating literature and literary texts, and so on. Hello, my name is Maria Rybakova, and I will be teaching two courses next semester. One course is called World Literature One. This course is kind of a gateway to the world literature major. I will be talking about the stories people have told from the beginning of humanity until, let's say, Cervantes, Don Quixote. So we'll talk about the ancient Egyptians, we'll talk about the ancient Greeks, We'll talk about the Renaissance, the Baroque, and, of course, we won't forget the kind of stories people told during the Middle Ages. Okay, so this is one course that I will be teaching. I will also be teaching another course, which is called Myth and Adaptation. We will start talking about Greek myths, and this topic is very dear to me 
because I wrote my dissertation on exactly this topic, mythology. And then we will talk about how do artists and thinkers and writers kind of adapt these myths and appropriate these myths to talk about their own times. I mean, I'm sure some of you have heard about Ulysses by James Joyce. That is a Greek myth, of course. And some of you might have read Pushkin, who also has used Greek myths in his own poetry, and Tucci, and so on. So this will be another course. And I welcome you to my courses, and I will be very happy to see you there. Bye-bye. Hello, uh, I'm Jenny Lehtinen, and I've been teaching at Nazarbayev University for the last eight years. Uh, before joining Nazarbayev University, I uh, completed my doctorate studies at Oxford University, where I also taught for a while, and I also taught at Exeter University. Uh, so I would like to tell you a little bit about the two courses I will be teaching this semester, which are Fan Culture in the Age of Cultural Convergence, which is a 200 level course, and uh, Film and Literature of the Post-Colonial World, which is uh, a 300 level course. So the Fan Culture course, you will, will get the chance to learn how fans have ceased to be passive consumers and become active participants. So we will not only be looking at fandom from the cultural perspective, but also from a more anthropological, political, and uh, also economic perspective. And this course normally includes a number of quite unconventional assignments, including keeping a fan log and writing a piece of fan fiction. Uh, the other course I will be teaching is uh, the course on post-colonial literature and film. And this course will obviously let you become familiar with a number of films and, uh, and books, novels and short stories from countries that have experienced uh, colonialism. So we will be looking at uh, cultural production from Africa, from Latin America, from the Caribbean and India. And again, I tend to include more creative assignments. So it's not all about writing essays, but you will get the chance, for instance, to write a missing section to a novel or a film or an alternative ending. So let me add that this post-colonial course will allow you to travel now that we can't really ever travel anywhere in reality and also to identify in your mind the places you want to visit when you can freely travel again. So uh, I really hope to see many of you on my two courses next semester and I wish you all the best luck. Uh, I'm Professor Gabriel McGuire. I teach in the Department of Languages, Linguistics, and Literatures. Uh, my specialization is oral literature, in particular folk tales, and I teach classes on world literature, on folk tales, and on the oral literature of Central Asia. This semester I'll be teaching WLL 110, Intro to Literary Studies, where we learn the basic tools of reading, analyzing, and writing about theater, short stories, novels, and plays. Uh, I hope to see you in class. Hello everyone, and welcome back. I am Professor Victoria Thorstensen. I work at the Department of Languages, Linguistics, and Literatures. My research is primarily in the 19th century Russian literature. I study realism and nihilism and such authors as Turgenev, Dostoevsky, Liskov, Tolstoy, and others. In the fall semester of 2020, I will be happy to offer you two courses. One is WLL 245 called Terrible Perfection, and the other is WLL 246, The Survey of Contemporary Russian Literature and Culture. I will say a few words about these courses. In Terrible Perfection, we will study the 19th century Russian literature, the images of most important and interesting heroines created by classical Russian writers, from Pushkin's Tatiana in Eugene Onegin to Tolstoy's Anna in Anna Karenina. 
we will also discover the so-called the second canon, the literature written by female writers of whom you might not have heard. We will read several prose works, poetic works, and memoirs created by important Russian women writers. And finally, we will also read some poetry. We will examine the relationship between the poet and his muse as we study works by Pushkin, Zhukovsky, Tuchev, and Fiat. Welcome to that course. In the survey of contemporary Russian literature and culture, we will discuss literature and culture written and created from the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991 to the present moment. We will study and read works of important contemporary Russian writers such as Viktor Pelevin, Zahar Prilepin, Eugene Vodolaskin, Tatiana Tolstaya, and so on. Some of these writers you probably have read, but some of them, important writers, you have not heard. You will have a lot of important discoveries ahead of you when you join this course. Apart from reading this important and interesting literature, we will also listen to some music, screen films, and consider theoretical approaches to the text that we study. We will talk about such issues as the memory of the Soviet experience. We will discover issues of memory, of the reassessment of the past, of dealing with the past and the traumatic memory. We will talk about literary genres such as postmodernist novel and post-apocalyptic novel. And we will discuss some other important theoretical texts. Welcome to that course as well. I hope to see you all in the fall and I'm looking forward to teaching you online. Goodbye. students of the School of Sciences and Humanities. Welcome to the program on World Languages, Literature and Culture. My name is Andrei Filchenko and I'm a professor of the Department of Languages, Linguistics and Literature. And this fall semester I'm going to be offering a course on research methods in linguistics, Ling 273. In this course in research methods in linguistics, we are going to examine the manner in which languages are studied, what is considered to be a language data, what is considered to be a theory, how it emerges and evolves, what are the methods in linguistic studies, what is considered to be an explanation. So there are four main blocks in this course. The first one is dedicated to evolution of linguistic theories. We will trace the ideas and thinking about languages starting from ancient antique times and arriving gradually to modernity and our contemporary theories about language. The second block looks at what are the research methods in linguistics paying primary attention to the empirical research methods in linguistics. The third block is connected to the second and it's going to look at language documentation and field linguistics in other words, where the primary language data comes from. And the final block, block number four, is going to look at anthropological linguistics and how these features are explained through social phenomena, through phenomena of language contact and language use. You will deal not only with theoretical issues, but you will try your hand in collecting your own language data and analyzing it and hopefully getting a good idea how theories are born and how we think about languages. Looking forward to seeing you in the course.
I'm Professor Eva Marie Dubuisson in the Department of Languages, Linguistics, and Literatures at NU. Uh, I'm a linguistic anthropologist, and my primary place or geographical place of research is actually Kazakhstan. So I've been coming to Kazakhstan for many, many years to do research on different things like poetry and oral traditions, politics, and more recently, um, discourses of environmentalism and ecological protection. Uh, this fall I'm going to be teaching a more advanced course which is discourse analysis. Um, that course is at the 300 level and it's definitely also appropriate for seniors. Uh, discourse analysis is a methodology that's also very widely shared across the social sciences. So this is not, uh, it's, a, it's a field in sociolinguistics but it's a methodology which is widely applicable across the social sciences, so um, linguistics, but also sociology, anthropology, political science, education, like all kinds of fields can use discourse analysis um, because it's the method where we look at how topics are constructed in the world, what it is that we talk about, the kinds of focus that we have at a given moment in time in history, what is everybody talking about? And then we also analyze how people are talking about it. What kinds of constructions, what kinds of language do people use to express these new kinds of topics and ideas in the world? It's a super useful, I would say, um, form of analysis and method for many different kinds of research projects. I should also say that one prereq, one desired prereq for this course would be prior exposure to something like linguistic anthropology. So you might have taken uh, the language and culture class, you might have taken language and communication with me, um, or at least an intro to linguistics so that you have some exposure to semantics and pragmatics before you take this course because I'm going to assume that you already know some of that stuff. So um, we'll have different units which are a combination of reading, theory, but also very much analysis, online analysis and activities and sharing. You'll be asked to prepare presentations uh, which are reviews of those units of materials before our uh, qualitative exams in the course. Um, I would say that this is a great class to take particularly if you are going to be doing um, a senior capstone project in linguistics or a related field um, either this year or next. I would really like to see you in DA because I think that this would be a very, very helpful analysis in terms of research methodology. That said, the other class I'm teaching in the fall is the Senior Capstone Seminar. I'm going to be one of the advisors for that, uh, together with Professor Jenny Littinen. We're going to be running that this year. So if you are thinking of doing a Senior Capstone this year and you want to talk about that or get a head start, please feel free to be in touch. I'm Dr. Olga Patanina. I'm an instructor at the Department of Languages, Linguistics and Literature at the School of Sciences and Humanities. And I'm a linguist. So what is linguistics? It's a mysterious subject for a lot of people because the subject is not taught at school. So people have a lot of misconceptions about linguists and what they do. Very often when you say to somebody that you do linguistics or you teach linguistics, they always ask something like, really? So how many languages do you speak? Or a lot of people think that linguists are those people who know how to write correctly, how to speak correctly, how to put all the commas in the right places and tell other people how to speak correctly uh, and correct their mistakes. Though a lot of linguists are highly educated people who know how to write and speak correctly, though a lot of linguists speak more than just one language, it's not what they do. This semester I'm going to teach a 100 level course, uh, Ling 131, Introduction to Linguistics 
which will give a, an exhaustive overview of this discipline of linguistics and give you the idea of what linguists actually do. And within this course, we'll take a look at the human language uh, in general. We are going to study how human language is structured, how human language is organized, and how human language is used in general. So we are going to take a look at different levels of language structure. So we'll take a look at the sounds of language and how they are classified. We are going to take a look at the words and their structure, how we compose words and how the words appear. Then we are going to take a look at the words uh, and their meanings, how we use words in communication. And then we are going to take a look at phrases and sentences, how we structure them, and what kind of meanings they also have. Within this course, we'll take a look at how languages change and evolve through time. We are going to take a look at how languages vary, how languages vary within the speech community, or how languages vary across a geographical area. And we are going to take a look at the question of how children acquire their native language. They are not taught, right? So they acquire their native language from their parents who just speak to them. Another very important field of linguistics is linguistic typology. And this semester I'm also going to teach a 200 level course, Link to 77, uh, Language Diversity and Language Universals. And this course is going to be about linguistic typology. So how many languages do you think are spoken in the world? What is the number? According to various estimates, the number is something between 6,500 to 7,000 languages. Imagine that. But what is sad is that a lot of these languages are disappearing at an alarming rate. And one of the urgent and the very important tasks of linguists is to preserve these languages, to, to document and describe these languages while, while there are still speakers left, or even happen, help to revitalize and support the language and the language communities to preserve and use their language. So within this course, we are going to take a look at the languages of the world, how diverse and different they are, and why we find these differences among these languages, and how similar they are, and how the similarities among the languages uh, can be explained. So we are going to work with the examples and data from various languages. I'm looking forward to seeing you in my courses. Hello, everyone. My name is Sami, Sami Honkasolo and I'm from Finland. I'm your new linguistics professor at uh, Nazarbayev University, and I teach linguistics here since January 2020. Uh, as a linguist, I'm specialized in languages of Asia, and especially in documenting lesser known languages. So we know that there are approximately 7,000 languages in the world, but most of these are actually small languages, and there is not a lot of research concerning them. And it is even said that most of these languages will die off by the end of this century, which will obviously be a global catastrophe for the whole humanity. So for this reason, uh, we linguists uh, do research all over the world documenting these languages. And I also hope that uh, through our activities, uh, we can positively contribute towards preserving them and even revitalizing them. So just to give you a quick overview of my courses, I taught the courses Sounds in the World's Languages and Language Contact in Central Asia. So in the course of sounds, we learned the major speech sounds that exist in human languages, uh, mostly focusing in the sound system of English. Uh, in addition to the course on sounds, I will be teaching a new course 
that is called multilingualism and language contact. So through reading original linguistic articles in this course, we will continue discovering the various manifestations of multilingualism. Uh, what is linguistics good for? Uh, actually, I think through learning linguistics, we're gonna, well, also learn foreign languages a lot easier. But not only that, we can gain a deeper understanding of our mother tongue. Uh, just to give an example, uh, if you learn the international phonetic alphabet, it really helps you learning English and other foreign languages. But in addition to this, so, uh, language plays a really central role in all human interaction. So it's not an exaggeration to say that it's one of the things that defines us as human beings. And also, I personally think that linguistics is simply cool. So through studying linguistics, we learn so many new things like how children learn their language, how languages change through history, uh, we learn about dialects and so on. Uh, all in all, I think that the Department of Languages, Linguistics and Literatures at Nazarbayev University provides you a great platform to explore the beauty of languages. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope to meet you soon. Bye. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Lili Zhang, and I'm the Chinese language instructor at Nadabayev University. So, I would like to introduce a little bit about the Chinese courses in our department. We have four different Chinese courses, and the first two beginning Chinese courses a Chinese 101 and a Chinese 102. We also have two intermediate Chinese courses, they are Chinese 201 and Chinese 202. In this full semester, we'll have two sections of Chinese 102 and another section of 201. Our teaching is task-based language teaching, so which means in our class, you will practice a lot of different tasks. Uh, for instance, you will have a lot of peer interviews in order to improve your listening and speaking skills. We also have some Chinese culture classes. For instance, we make some Chinese food together, such as the Chinese noodles, the Chinese mooncakes, the Chinese drinks, and so on. We also have some calligraphy classes. So, the students can use a brush pen to practice writing Chinese characters. So I think you will have a lot of fun with us. I hope I can see you in this fall and happy 10th anniversary to our university. 大家好,欢迎来我们的课。你会学上汉语,有的汉语,还会怎么学汉字,提汉字。大家好,初学习中国的文化以外,你也会做传统的中国菜。我记得你已经会很喜欢汉语,因为中文课很有意思。大家一起学习汉语吧,加入我们的课
When you hear about Korea, what comes to your mind first? K-pop? K-drama? Or the movie Parasite? Or the Korean character Hangul? In August 2019, last year, I joined this Nazarbayev University. And here, in the Department of Languages, Linguistics, and Literatures, I teach Korean at different levels. And also have cultural classes and events. I've been teaching Korean language and culture for more than 10 years in several different countries. Of course in Korea, but also in China, in Indonesia, and now in Kazakhstan. I love to meet students from different cultures through my profession. My degrees are in translation studies, second language education, and the teaching of a Korean as a foreign language. And my research interests lie in cross-cultural studies, curriculum development, and their analysis of language differences, especially between North Korea and South Korea, among other topics. I'm really looking forward to meeting all of you and studying together in the near future. Thank you. 감사합니다. Hola chicos, ¿qué tal? Me llamo Edita García y soy profesora de español. Hello guys, how are you? I'm sure that you understood me. My name is Edita García. I'm a Spanish language instructor. I was working in Spain, in the Philippines, and uh, now I've been working for six years in Astana. Here in our university, I uh, teach beginners and intermediate level of Spanish language. And as you know, after two years, you can continue uh, learning Spanish, uh, choosing uh, other subjects related with Spanish language and Spanish culture. This year also we will have a, a, a new lecturer from Spain who will, uh, uh, will teach a beginner's level. Speaking about uh, courses, uh, I want to tell you that uh, my students from the uh, from very uh, first uh, class are able to communicate in, in Spanish. As well, uh, they develop uh, all the skills, speaking, uh, listening, uh, reading, writing. They uh, learn a lot. They learn a lot uh, Spanish language always together with the culture. But I'm also very uh, sh sure that they enjoy it, enjoy it uh, a lot. For me also, it's very important to uh, make you independent in the process, uh, learning process. Uh, why? Because you start uh, now your adventure with Spanish language, but uh, you will continue all your life. So I think that it's very important to know how to do it. Okay, chicos, muchísimas gracias. Uh, espero veros en Zoom en agosto, en dos semanas. Y mucha suerte y adiós. Adiós. Nos chers élèves, je m'appelle Saulet, je suis professeur du français à l'Université Nazarbaya. Hi everyone, my name is Sauli and I am uh, an instructor at the, at the Department of Languages, uh, Linguistics and Literatures uh, in the School of Sciences and Humanities at Nazarbayev University. Our department major is World Languages, uh, Literatures and Cultures and we propose different uh, types of uh, courses in language acquisition as well as in uh, literature field. At, faculty, at the faculty, I teach uh, beginner and intermediate French. Beginner French, the beginner French or uh, French one, uh, 100 
is uh, taught over two semesters and covers uh, the main general topics in French, like uh, like uh, such as uh, traveling, cuisine, family, holiday, social life, and etc. This course was, was planned and created for new students in SSH who never who have never studied French uh, in their life. And it is prioritized for the first and second uh, year undergraduates in order to make it possible to accomplish an intermediate uh, French uh, course at the end of their uh, gradu under undergraduate studies. The French uh, 200 or intermediate French is a, fr is co is a course that taught uh, for the students uh, who have already been studying French with me and uh, those students who studied French uh, outside of our faculty will be uh, will be enrolled in course only after uh, passing a placement test. As a consequence of uh, COVID-19 pandemic, both courses will be taught in uh, online through Zoom. So we will meet every uh, day um, on Zoom and those students who don't have or won't have in a good internet connection will be able to watch just the recorded lessons and make the exercises. To make it easier for you to have, to ask me anything uh, during the, the semester, uh, I will be available on three platforms, uh, Telegram, Instagram, and Gmail. And also, um, Gmail, if you have any questions right now concerning our course, you can contact me right away with this through this email, okay? So, uh, I hope uh, we will see you very soon. Au revoir et à bientôt.